All right, so um, I am going to be talking about 2.2, um, responding output, All right? Uh, we will be working through steps one through 18 today, and then I will uh, show you how to get through these assignments. I'm gonna close off a few of these tabs for a second. Um, I'm gonna need that one, close you. Okay, so our assignment today is working on 2.2 responding outputs. And if you click this link to the PLTW assignments, it should take you to um, our course right here, okay? So um, it's gonna ask you what programming practices look like, why are interactions between machines and humans and the environment beneficial, problematic, or both? We will have our materials, the output devices images sheet, and then we will also be working in the make code micro bit stuff. So I haven't clicked on that just yet. Uh, we'll start working on that here in a little bit. And then I also have these resources, uh, these hex codes. They were uh, located right here on this file if you wanna download them through Google Drive. And then we also have the um, output device image sheet link as well, which should look like this, right? And you will have to take a screenshot of this right here. So um, let's go ahead and get started, right? It says use the output device image sheet link in the previous slide, which we were just talking about. And it's gonna have you go through these as well, um, which is also the same thing in our PLTW. I just um, took screenshots of these to make it easier for you to know where you're at, okay? So um, what's an output? Now that you've had a chance to learn about various inputs and what the micro bit can detect from its environment, it's time to learn how you use your micro bit to control output devices and see how they impact your environment. Number one, review the output devices connector section of the micro bit exploration. All right, and then fill out the output devices image sheet. So let's go ahead and click on the micro bit kit exploration. All right, output devices. And we are here. Okay, so this looks like the buzzer. Okay, and so when I come to this, I'm going to make a copy of this just for uh, filling out purposes. All right, so um, it says the buzzer right here. So there are five connected buzzers, 25 total individual ones snapped apart and it produces sound, okay? So right here, buzzer. And then can copy this right there, control C. All right, and what it does, five connected buzzers, 25 total individual ones snapped apart, produces sound, great. Next one, our light emitting di diodes. We have 20 LEDs, five of each color, blue, red, green, yellow, produces light, and it's a digital output, right? Either ones or zeros, meaning it's, it is on or off. So there we go, we have our LEDs. Next one, we have a servo, all right. So servos rotate a shaft to a specific angle, like a car or a wheel. And the set values between zero and 180, right? So from one part of the circle all the way to the bottom of the circle, right? So let's go ahead and take this information here. And then we'll put that into the servo. There's two of them, it looks like. One says, Standard, if I look a little closer, what will we see? Let's say one says continuous, the other one says standard. Okay, so which one is this? This one says standard. Okay, so we'll put that one down here. And that's lights. Standard servo. Standard servo, that is the name. And the other one is a continuous servo. Continuous servo. 
And then this one, uh, rotates the shaft continuously at a set speed, set value between 180, where zero is full speed in one direction, 180 is full speed in the opposite direction, and 90 produces no movement. Hmm, interesting. Oh, it's a lot. Let's see. Don't like that, Mr. Coach D. Mm -hmm. All right, there's that information. And then we have other connectors. We need LEDs is one of them. It's probably in the essentials. Let's see. That is the micro bit. What it does. Ooh. And then what is this one? A little black one. All right, I'm gonna find this one. I don't think I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. It's not on here. And the miscellaneous, nope. All right, so let's go back into our assignment. 2.2. See if we can find that. All right, looks like. Um, Servo, all right, let's just check the answers real quick. Um, this one right here is C, a buzzer. Hmm. B is the LED board, really? Okay, so C would be the buzzer, that's weird. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and this one is the LED board. All right. All right, so what I would do then is I would make my screen a little bit smaller by pressing control negative, and then I would take a screenshot of this, All right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this so I can put the answers on there. All right, so down here is where I put my screenshots of my completed sheet. All right, I'm gonna just go to about right there. So pull up my amazing snipping tool. Just get to my buzzer, copy that, come here. Put it on there. I'm gonna go down a little bit farther, farther, farther. And then take these right here. And then put that on my assignment like that. So I took my screenshots of the completed output device. If you need uh, headphones or over there, you may borrow them. All right, so that is that one. So exploring outputs and actuators. So I guess let's go back to our activity. Exploring outputs and actuators. Similar with, to your work with inputs, you will explore output devices, including an LED board buzzer and two types of servos. Servos provide movement and therefore are considered a special type of output device and actuator. Actuator says, a type of motor or servo that is responsible for moving or controlling a mechanism or components. All right, so actuator is another word for a motor, right? LED, a light emitting diode, emits light when electric current flows through it, connecting an LED to the micro bit. A signal travels through an LED in one direction, therefore, when wiring an LED, make sure to connect the positive end of the LED, the longer pin, to the GPIO pin, the negative end, the shorter pin, to the ground, All right? You can see, um, that it is color coded as well. The 3V pin and the ground should never directly be connected. That will fry stuff. And I am getting these micro bits actually. I 
I put it in order, but it's a whole long story about that. All right, we're over here on step number three. Import A2 to LED code. All right, is this the code? All right, let's go to documents, GTT, here in computer science, make code. Oof. All right, we're just gonna go back to that one, create a new folder. We're gonna call this one 2.2 responding output. Put that one in there, bang. So now it says to import the file. So let's go uh, import, import file. Where are you, Mr. Coach D? You put them in there. Computer science, responding output, LED. Bang. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right. It says the forever code. Digital write pin zero to one and then to zero. Okay. All right. Let's see what it says to do. Uh, we did that. What is your curve? The zero pin is flashing on and off. Um, yeah, I noticed that it was doing that. Okay, it's definitely doing that. That's actually a question to number four. Run the code of the emulator. What do you observe? If you press the check your response, there it is. There's your answer. Pin zero is flashing on and off. And that will be the answer to question number four. Okay. So, um, Keep it going. It says, where the code, observe the code on the digital right block, click the pin number to see your options. Is this what we're talking about? Let's see. Don't need you anymore. Observe the code on the digital right block, click the pin number to see your options. Change the pin to both to change pin to P1 and both digital write blocks. Okay. Pin one. Now what? Now uh, number one is digital. Okay. What do you observe? All right. Pin one is now flashing on and off. Okay. Great. The digital write sends a signal to the pin selected in the block, in this case, P1, being digital. The value of the pin will be either one or zero, causing any digital component that is connected to the pin to turn on when the value is one and off when the value is zero. All right, so that is the question for number six, okay? That's how you answer that one. So I would uh, take that information and put that there. Additional information, you may wonder why 21 pins are available to the program, yet there are only five large pinholes for attaching components. In addition to the five large pins, the microbit has 16 other small pins located between the large pins. To access all 21 GPIO pins, you need to use a breakout board, a special device that you insert the edge of the microbit into. Alligator clips are not precise enough to access the small pins, in this unit, you're only required to use pins one, two, three, B, and ground. All right, number seven. Take a close look at how the code blocks in the program are arranged. How is this forever block affecting the program? So that is um, question number seven. And number seven, the answer, All right? The forever block is a loop that repeats the code inside it indefinitely. So that would be the answer to question number seven. All right, number eight. Well, let's move on down. The LED board. An LED board is made of a number of LEDs attached together. You can choose which diodes you want to wire your micro bits. Connecting an LED board to the micro bit. When you wire an LED board, make sure to connect positive ends of the chosen LEDs to the GPIO pins and negative ends to the ground, right? So you can see this ground is right here. These are all grounded out and these are all other um, 
pins connected to our uh, LED light board, okay? All right, so we're at step eight, import LED board hex file. All right. Cool. Go to home, import, import LED hex file. Go ahead. Okay. Um, run the code in the emulator and press button A. Okay. All right, so it says, what happens, right? It looks like zero, one, two, and three, or zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Uh, it runs um, four times, okay? It's kind of cool. So I guess that is, where are we at? That is number nine right here. What do you observe besides pins zero, one, and two? Zero, one, and two. Anything besides them? I don't see. Uh, let's try it again. What happens? What do you observe beside pins zero, one, and two? Oh, they're flashing on and off, right? So let's see what it says in our response. Doesn't have anything in there, but it's just flashing on and off at different times, right? And there's an amazing code. Okay, all right, so that takes us down to the next one. It says on slide 11, uh, publish step 12. Well, we haven't got to step 12 yet, so let's go to step 10. All right, let's make some changes to the a a uh, LED board code. Remember that the pause is shown in milliseconds. There are 1,000 milliseconds in one second, okay? Make the following modifications to the existing program. Change which buttons begins the program. Okay, so let's make it when A and B is pressed. All right, change the structure of the program so that when the button is pressed, the following sequence happens. PO flashes four times, P1 flashes, P4 flashes four times. And then modify the duration of the pauses. Okay, so I want PO to run four times. PO flashes four times. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna pause it. And then, let's try like this. So it says PO flashes four times. So we're right, to number one. That's four times. And then P1 flashes four times. And then P2. All right, so let's see what happens there. All right. And let's just run it. Press the B button. They all pressed with no pauses, right? It just says repeat four times. So that didn't work how we wanted it to. So let's put pause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See what happens there. Let it stay on. All right. Let's struggle a little bit. I'm going to press the pause button for a second on my cord. Mm -hmm, pause. All right. So after struggling for a little while, I figured out the code. Okay. A change. The activity says for you to change the button that begins the program, change the structure of the program so the button is pressed, the following sequence happens, PO flashes four, P1 flashes four, P2 flashes four, and then modify the duration of the pauses. Okay, so what I did is I took P0, put it at one, 
and I ran that four times, right? So I put it, glasses on, pauses, turns off, right? And I did the same thing with P1 and then P2. You'll notice that my loop is right here, right here and right here. So that when I press B, it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I made it all fast because I made my pause uh, 100 milliseconds instead of three. So now run the code, did that, save the modified program as LED board at last name. So I'm going to download this, possibly. I'm going to put my last name. Cookie will suffice. I will save this in my code. Let me compilation. There are no errors in my code. Compilation, check your code for errors. I'll fight you. All right, I'm gonna share it, publish my project, All right? Copy that. And then I come over here to step 12. And then I press control shift V and then I press enter and I should be able to go to that code eventually. Here's my simulator, it's popping up. And then I press the B button. Boom, boop, 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 boop. Perfect, all right, I like it. Even though you didn't like me, Microsoft make code, all right, so that was slide 11. Now we are at the buzzer. Um, so let's just go back to that. Light is just one type of output. Let's make some noise. Connecting a buzzer to the micro bit. When wiring a buzzer, make sure to connect one end pin to the PO and the other one to the ground. The buzzer is not polarized. It will work even if you switch the positive and negative wire connections. All right, so import A2 buzzer on and off. Okay, let's go here, go back home, import, buzzer on and off. All right. Okay, looks like we got P, play middle C for one beat. That's amazing. Okay, um, that's enough of you. All right. Um, what did you notice in the emulator? Um, the buzzer automatically wired pin on pin zero. Okay. Um, I can see that, yeah, for sure. Um, run the emulator. Did you perform the program perform? If not, you need to turn the volume up. Can you think of a way to better control it? Um, modify the beat. Change the number of beats can increase or decrease the length of your tone. Modify the length of the C note and then add a few more notes to play. Tone blocks with different tones and beats from music drawer. A quick way to add more of the same block is to right click it and use duplicate. Use the emulator to listen to your code. Use the time you have left to modify your code. Add another button on the block from the input drawer. Change the button to be on your new block. Select the ringtone block from the music drawer. Use the emulator to test the button. Remember that there is a play stop button on the emulator. Okay, so there is, um, that's a radio. I think it's under four, no, nope. music. There we go, play melody, play tone, tempo. Let's try advanced melody, yeah. Nice. All right, there is my code. Okay, um, we did import play me. Okay, let's try that one. All right, import play me. Well, I got a few more minutes left, class. Mm -hmm. We should be finishing this up pretty soon. All right, press A, Let's see what we got here. <laughs> I 
Ta da! Nice. Okay. So, do you recognize the tune? Yeah, that is Mary Had a Little Lamb. All right, create some new sound code and try it on the emulator. Save your program as play me slash last name. All right, so that would be the end of it. Um, you can make your own code on here. It's kind of hard uh, to do if you don't know much about music, but if you just took this code and you put it as your last name, I will consider that done, but you gotta publish it, right? So come up here and share, slash publish, right? And then put that into your step 15 or step 18. Take that, put that here, control shift V, press enter. And your last one is insert a meme of your choosing, all right? Explain why you chose this meme and why it is going. And that is how you do 2.2 responding output.